Okay, I do believe that we are live. In my preparations for getting live today, I forgot to load up Minecraft. Incredible, right? Let's live stream. Let's not forget about uh, the game that we're live streaming, of course. Oh, last time I was on here, by the way, I was in the game mode 4 texture pack. This looks seriously cool, and it looks pretty cool in default as well. Very really interesting uh, how the texture pack made it look so different, though. Because I'm looking around, I'm like, where is this place? What am I doing here? So, hello, everyone. I'm back from download. I see a few messages from you guys. I had absolutely fantastic, amazing time. Festivals are the best. If you ever thought, I want to go to a music festival, do it. <laughs> Trust me, it's brilliant. So I had a great time, and uh, I've been looking forward to streaming today. Actually, that's kind of a lie. <laughs> Earlier on, I was like, I should probably stream later. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to. But then as, as time got closer and closer, I started thinking, yeah, yeah, let's do a stream. I want to do this, I want to do that. And here we are. <laughs> And it's really good to be back. Uh, the plan is currently to stream today, tomorrow and Friday. And uh, and then probably again on Monday. I thought that was an Enderman. For a split second there, I literally thought that was an Enderman off in the distance. But this is an arm. And another arm. Brilliant. Uh, we are in a random location because I teleported some people who were playing on here earlier. I do believe this is their plot. We'll have a quick look at that. I'm going to say hello to all of my regulars. I see you all in chat, by the way. Little cucumber. A stallion, Peddy, Jesper, Potato Viking is here. Oh look, we got a friend, it's Potato Fries. This is his plot right here. And uh and when I came here last it was a little less of actually it's it kinda of different. I'm pretty sure there was a room over here and some other things and it looks like we're we're hanging out. <laughs> Best buds forever, okay. <laughs> awesome. I wonder if he knows that we're streaming right now. I don't know. Um Oh, this looks ever so cool around here. I'm sure this is going to turn out great. Oh, that makes sense. When I came in before, it was from this side. And there was this little room over on the left. Yeah. That looks cool. This this place looks so different in the Game Mode 4 texture pack. Yeah, they, they make such a big difference. You guys know this. Yes, there was uh, Zombie Johnny talking about Doom. There was an announcement for Doom. That is true. I'm not terribly excited. Um, it really felt and looked like it would be a modern FPS. And it's the old Doom... The way it plays, it's charm that I really like, and I felt like they tried to make a, a big and crazy scary game. I, I don't know what I think. <laughs> There's jellyfish throwing pies at me. Um, we'll have to wait and see how that game is. So, Oh, Steel Tech says, this is my first stream. There we go, there's always one every stream, at least one. Which is cool. <laughs> Hi Spec, you are a regular, I know, I recognise your name. Well, this looks interesting. Aha, huh, someone is building a pretty cool build style, actually. Very plain and simple. I like this. This has potential. <laughs> Reminds me of, like, a, a toy city or something like that. But we're getting distracted here. And Jellyfish is having fun. We should uh, we should go over to the plot world. No, we're on the plot world. That was silly. Yes, let's go over here. And uh, we're going to check out something that I haven't worked on for a while. Because I've been... Trying to work on it. Wait. Oh, words, sentences. It'll all be a little bit back to front today. <laughs> Let's put it like that. So I've been working on a contraption for a long time. Also, resubscriber hype. Dark Fox DX. Thank you so much for your support as always. That reminds me. I need to look into um, into the whole subscription thing. I need to make a note quickly. I'm going to open Notepad and write that down. Uh, Twitch subscriptions. I was supposed to make a note of that. I have notes all over my desktop of things that I need to do. And now we've got another one. Yeah. Uh, Manha, I did not forget you. And Blind Glow. I can't list every regular. I'm a regular troll, indeed. <laughs> ah, right. Um, Juggernaut Joe. Yeah, I remember. I remember your, your shout out, indeed. Can't remember what for, though. Oh, everyone's allowed on my plot. Okay, this is going to get crazy quickly. Um, I'll have to remove you all from the plot soon, but I'll let you stay here for a moment. This guy looks kind of dodgy, doesn't he? I'm not sure I like this fella here. The King the King Tanner, eh? Something, something suspicious about that bloke. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so basically there's a contraption on this plot that I've been working on for the longest time, and I just can't get my head around it. I've put, like, a good... Hmm... Ten hours into... Nah, maybe ten's a bit much. Eight. I'd say at least... At least six to eight hours. That's probably pretty reasonable. I really put a lot of time. And this is the contraption right here, by the way. 
So um, the idea was to make the most compact possible mass AFK breeder. So for those of you that haven't seen that before, hey, it's Harper Boy. Hello. <laughs> and uh, now we're getting bombarded. We're getting bombarded with cannons and pies. Yeah, it's not good. Um, yeah, so the mass AFK breeder is one where let's put it like this. Then it ends there. Uh, just pretend. <laughs> this is a terrible example. Just pretend that I know what I'm doing for once. Okay, so basically the water goes around in the circle, and uh, the pistons aren't actually here, they're like pressure plates or something, but uh, the animals will go around in a circle over and over again, and all you have to do is sort of stand there and breed them, and they all drop down into a pit down below. Now I made this farm a long, long time ago, and since I've had this idea that I want to compact it, okay, this is... Right, you can have your moment of fun, and I'm going to uh, deny everyone for a moment. Sorry peeps, it has to be done. Hope you can understand. Where is everyone? They're all over there now. Well, this side over here is where you want to come to. Hey, there's 8 Provar. Oh, we'll donate on here as well, that's awesome. Good to see. Yeah, by the way, you can donate to the server. All donation money goes towards paying the bills and uh, stuff like that, basically. Running the server, nothing else. It's uh, a non-profit thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, I decided that I wanted to stream this because I'd like some community input, and, yeah, it's been ages since I worked on this, so let's talk about what we're doing. So, for AFK breeding, what you don't need them to do is go around in a circle like we did over here. This was just an original design idea, right? And you'll see that a lot in contraptions, and if you think back to how farms originally appeared in the game and then kind of changed over time. It's the same kind of thing. Hey Python GB, I see you there hanging out in the chat. Um, it's similar to that, so you know we, we get away from this idea that they need to go around in a circle and we put them into a single spot and that spot is right here. So we can put our cows in this spot, we can turn it on and off with this dispenser so when they bob up and down we can breed them just like we do when they move in a circle. So we can continuously breed, and that is definitely the more compact way of doing it. Now, I've made myself a cup of tea, and I totally need a sip. <sighs> when can I play without registering on the server? Uh, Sarandoom, I think. I think you can be added to a plot when you're not registered and build, but don't quote me on that. Um, but you have to register to build on your own plot, that's for sure, or to have your own plot. Although you don't need to register to play the mini games, so that's the thing. X, you need to use Snow Layer. I don't know what I need to use Snow Layer for, um, but it's interesting that you brought that up. Okay, this isn't going to work if I'm going to get blown up. <laughs> but let me explain. So, um, so yeah, we're going to bob the cows up and down in the middle, right? And I think the best way to separate them, there's Fozzie, <laughs> with uh, a strange skin on his head. It's not his real head. <laughs> hey. Um, yeah, the best way to separate them, I think, is for them to have maximum outputs. I mean, this is something that really needs testing, actually. I'll put it out there for someone who wants to do a test. When we have them bobbing up and down in one place, is it going to be... Um, are they going to be better separated the more sides are available? Because, for example, we could block these in and just have one exit for the baby cows, but I've done it with all four. And uh, that's important because there's quite a few things. I am Noodles! I can't see anything you stream, and if you can see but not hear, then something is wrong because no one else is saying uh, that there's something wrong. But anyway, let's get back to it. So the source water block is over here and it goes around in a circle, so any cow that falls out to the side will end up going in this direction. And the reason it's done like that is so that the water stream ends over here. And that's because of the way I've decided to um, to kill them, which is going to be with lava. So I want this to be a machine where you breed the animals and you automatically get the food cooked for you. Come on, guys. We can't have all of that, otherwise I'm going to have to move it somewhere else. Um, yeah, so they're going to fall down on here. Right, let's, let's take a step back. So you're breeding them. We've discussed the breed a bit. We're hanging out here, we're breeding them, they're separating. 
And you also need water in the middle there. There is... Well, there is a control for that. Actually, I think it's... See, it's hooked up to other things. Let's just hit it anyway. Okay, so that, that enables the water, right? So now we're in breeding mode, and then this one... When you hit it again... Yeah, there's some sort of like... This is like an override for a clock, so you kind of have to hit it and leave it. So it's not like you press a button, you use the leave it in an awkward way, but that way it's more compact. So anyway, you saw there that using this redstone block, we could manipulate the water in the middle. That puts it into breeding mode, so we could stand here and breed them AFK. And the babies will get separated and fall down here. And when they grow into adults, that's when we're going to cook them, right? So what we need to do is cook them with lava. And we have the lava right here. And that's where we have this thing. So I do believe this is being powered. I'm not sure if it relies on the pulse length over there or not, but let's say we activate this thing. So uh, now I think the clock is in use. There we go. Oh, it would have just done it. Oh, and the thing fires. Okay, so it's probably on a smallish delay. So let's watch what happens here. So remember, all of our baby animals are going to go down the bottom. Come on. <laughs> There you go. So, glass block extends, the lava appears for a split second, and then it retracts the glass. And the lava doesn't get to flow down below, which is kind of important. We could possibly put a carpet there, and that would possibly make it catch on fire. <laughs> um, I wonder if you put a pressure plate on top of that, and it would stop the lava. Because, I mean, that would be a good failsafe to have. It wouldn't be terribly necessary. So yeah, all your baby animals are going to be down the bottom here. And when they grow into adults, this thing is going to automatically kill them. Just by doing that every so often. And we'd have the timer a little bit more. So any baby animal that's coming down here, I think unless it's like directly in the middle of this block, um, it probably won't get hurt. And the occasional one might, you know, somehow make its way or just be in the wrong place at the wrong time and land on the lava. If they decide to jump up and down down here, then that's a problem. But I... I don't think they do that so much anymore. So I see a lot of you are joining right in the middle of me explaining this. I'll probably do a quick explanation again um, after we get to the end of it. Also, who's online? I was hoping to see, uh, to see JB online. If anyone here is in contact with JB, let him know his redstone expertise would... Uh... Oh, there's Fools. Hello. <laughs> would be um, yeah, kind of kind of useful right now because JB's an awesome... Redstone. He helped me do this little bit over here. Actually, I'm not sure if I'm still using his design. This probably is his design. It's been changed so many times because the goal of this is to be compact. So anyway, um, we got that far. We got this thing sort of half done. We can technically control the middle bit and activate it. So if we hit it like that, this timer is now on. And we got the water in the middle. And then when we hit it again... We turn that off, we also override this, so this bit has been turned off. That's what controls the lava. So let's just go over that again. Right, so timer on. Interesting. Okay, so it's on, and now it's off. But then to turn it back on, you've got to go one, two, and three. Yeah. So it's like off, and then three for on. One, two, three off. Yeah, it's, it's a strange way of, of doing things, but because we can do it with just the lever alone, it means that we don't have to use a single button and then create more redstone to control how all of that works. So technically that does what it's supposed to do, it's just a little bit awkward. Now, where that is is probably out of range of this when you're in survival as well, so it's not terribly useful. It's sort of just in range in creative. Um, and this is the bit where I got stuck, because we're trying to keep everything in a really compact space. And as you can see, we've almost achieved that so far. So, as well as being able to do that over there, we also want to have this, when we hit that, control this thing. We don't want two sets of buttons, really, but we might end up doing <laughs> just that, because I think this thing is actually kind of done, now that I look at it. Um, if you have two sets of controls rather than one, but I think I'd like to try and look for alternative ways to control it, so it's nice and straightforward. Alright, so then over here, this is the last bit of the contraption, we have um, the wheat dispenser. And I think actually I might have been struggling to fit this in, yeah, it looks completely unfinished. So you'd walk up to the contraption, you would uh, get inside this bit, then you'd turn it on over there, 
and then this thing would also need to turn on and it would just continuously dispense wheat that gets picked up by the hopper down below and recycled over and over again. So then once you've conditioned your inventory to only have one slot where you're holding wheat, you can set the game up to hold down right click while you do something else on your computer and then it's just going to simply uh, breed. I think Jess is making a couch of some sort. <laughs> um, yeah. And then that's it. That's like a, a mass animal breeder fit into a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. A 7 by 7 space, which is about 5 blocks tall, which I think is pretty damn impressive. Now, in terms of compacting it, there's probably always ways to make this like slightly smaller or to make a, a better system than the way we've done the lava here. Um and possibly we could compact it by doing this thing right here. So if someone wants to test that, that's a challenge for all of you watching. If you want to test this little bit right here, it would be really interesting to know how many babies get separated depending on how many gaps there are around this, because this is our animal breeding bit. Yeah, will you do a tutorial on this contraption? That is the plan. I, When I make a contraption, I want it to be useful in survival. I want people to you know, be able to actually realistically build it most of the time depends on what it is and then I want to make a tutorial out of it that's how I do things and maybe even build it on like Hermitcraft as well so I can use it myself um, oh Autism Far is here hello buddy and yeah so I do I do want to do a tutorial and it looks like we're like really close to being done if I can just make this thing run down here within the space that we've got on its own controls then we could say it's finished uh, but I would like to try and compact it and make it smarter as well. And I think one of the biggest ways we could compact it is by knowing um, if we really need all four sides here. Because if it turned out that there's no difference between having four and having one, then that would be a real game changer because this thing is taking up a large amount of space in the middle. Uh, but otherwise, I really like this contraption, by the way. I just think it looks... Like, it doesn't look great. It doesn't look like sleek redstone or anything like that, but it's just all in there and it's so cool the way it works. I really like this uh, using the redstone block going across as well. Yeah, so that's a contraption we're making. So people are still tuning in. I'm seeing the numbers go up. So what we'll probably do is uh, take a break from this for a moment, see if JB comes online, check out some things, come back to it and I'll explain it like very quickly again because there's lots of new people here. Uh, also, if you want a challenge, I was going to try and do this, but I just couldn't do it myself. You see this right here is another challenge. I want to build a nether wart farm on Hermitcraft. And what I wanted to do was have a 16 by 16 block of soul sand like this. And then build a giant pixel art nether wart in the middle of it. But that's not my strength at all. <laughs> that's what this thing right here is, by the way. If anyone can do that here on the plot world, that would be absolutely amazing. And I would totally build it. <laughs> Good old tea. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting requests in chat for people asking me to go to their plot. There's there's no point asking really. Um, you know, like when I when I go to plots, I do it of my own. Kind of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just teleport to people randomly. I don't tend to listen to requests because otherwise, you know, more people will request. Um, so this is a door that I've been. I think this I was working on this like two years ago and I could just never finish it and make it compact as I wanted but it's supposed to be um, a piston door that's completely flush to the point that then these two blocks right here would fill in and I never finished that <laughs> that's been around for a long time on my list and just never T boys <laughs> in chat there interesting it's like the tea club yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll walk around and have a look at a few projects. I'll tell you about them because, I don't know, half this stuff never gets finished. See, with ideas, I, I'm not too keen on like sharing them until I've like figured them out fully. But anyway, this is, uh, right here is basically me copying someone else's build <laughs> from a video. I had a screenshot of it and I just wanted to try and um, build like they did. And I found it fun to do, but... Yeah, I don't think it's something like I could come up with on my own, but I just need to get more time to do that because I need to learn. So over here I was working on a simple elevator concept. Oh, can I even remember how this one works? I 
think you need a flint and steel. Oh no, do you replace and detach the redstone block? I don't know. I was trying to make a flying machine that goes up and down basically infinitely. And so when it when it lands at the bottom, it stops, and then you can press a button and make it go back up to the top. And then when it gets up here, you can do it all over again. But it's been so long since I've looked at this, I'm not sure. And I think you have to move the blocks around as well, so... It's, uh... Can you play Agario again? I, I'm not going to be playing Agario today, we're just going to be playing on the plot world. Let's see if we can figure this one out then. So looking at where the bud switches are, I think this is the other one? No? <laughs> what have I done? It's going down, I think... I think the server might be struggling a little bit. What we probably need is the old... Oh, the barrier wall's there, okay. So we have a lot of people on, the server's struggling by the looks of it. But I think I put it in the right place. So when the redstone block's on this side, it goes down, and when it's on the other one, it goes up. And my idea was that, as a player, you could stand here and use it... Well, if we're not going to fall through it. Basically use it as an elevator. And it moves a lot faster than that, it's just because the uh, server's under a lot of strain, I guess. Yeah, so that's what that project was, and that's another sort of failed experiment that I can never figure out. Um, there's all sorts of other things over here. I was going to make a video on this, but it felt a little bit too simple. Yeah, you can see, kind of see what's going on here. I think the server's being really slow. Yeah, look, it only just unpressed. What is this supposed to do over here? It's putting items into the chest? Oh, people have filled this up with just loads of ridiculousness. <laughs> um, I can't even remember what that was supposed to do, but basically this signal right here degrades, so it's like a pulse lengthener. And then you've got a little clock over here. So it's all like a simple way to do a clock. Um, let's go over here. This is where I do the banners for the banner showcase. I like to come on the uh, plot world and just craft them and then put them down. You can see there's probably some here that haven't been used and ones that I've been playing around with. Um, I was thinking about building an ABBA caving building again and trying to make a logo, but never really went too far with that. And then, for the rest of this stuff, some of this is just like... I can't even remember what it is. There was a contraption around... Oh, here it is. Oh, now this... This contraption... I need to look at it to try and remember what it does. I think it was supposed to be an actual time of day clock where it would light up on the exact time of day up here. So if it was, you know, like it is now, all of them would be lit up. If it was earlier in the day, only some of them would. And I think it works, except if you change the time manually, it breaks it. So you have to have, like, the world just naturally doing its thing, you know. The sun going around the cube, the cubic world of Minecraft. You know what I'm on about. Um, yeah, and so that... I should look at that again sometime, because that was a cool little project. Um, so this thing right here was a part of that. What I wanted to do is create a sort of edge detector, I guess you could call it, except it would detect the signal strength was going up or going down. Um, so let's see if we can demonstrate this. Oh, so one thing just activated. Let's turn that off again. Damn, the lag. This is to be expected when I log on and stream at the same time. Hmm. <laughs> Redstone's not turning off. It's kind of worrying. So, I wonder if I can explain it by looking at it. I guess when this thing gets powered, right, it's, it's going to power that the first time. But when it becomes unpowered, because it's already powered, it's not going to do anything the next time because the piston's going to go down. So that way, it detects when the signal is rising, so when it gets powered for the first time. So this one has to do the opposite of that. And apparently you do that just by inverting it. So when this turns on, the torch is going to turn off, which means this piston comes down. But then when the signal goes downwards and it turns back on, um, it activates this. Yeah, so that's how you do it. That's actually really simple. <laughs> um, over here was an idea that I had for... I think it was a minecart chest organiser. So the minecart chest drops down. And if you have a look at the way the redstone arranged... The idea was that all of these trapdoors will sort of shuffle and let the minecarts all move down by one 
Uh, minecart chests, by the way, and it would also rotate the colours on the side. So not only would you know what chest is in there, well, sorry, not only would there be chest access, you'd know which one it is because it would be colour coded. And as I started doing that, I can't remember, I think there's some problems with the minecart chests on top of trapdoors, and I never really followed up on that idea, but that's another cool idea that's sort of lying around here doing nothing. Um, now, this. This was the original design for the alternative status indicator, which is where I was thinking, like, you know, you've got all these uh, redstone lamps for telling you if something's on or off. Why don't we try and find something different for that? And an armor stand with a helmet on top when it's in the ground, kind of like made a little square, and you could use that. You could color code it, you know, red or green. And initially, I tried to do that with um, like a little minecart setup like this, and it was really complex and difficult to get to work. And so there's a couple of those lying around. This right here I have absolutely... Actually, this is the leftover of um, the flush wall armor equipper, I do believe. No, not an armor equipper. Just the, the jump entrance where you walk up and then go up through the top area. Yeah, these are all like tutorials on my channel now. <laughs> or at least the ones that I finished. Uh, this was a design for a hub in Hermitcraft. Actually, there's another one of those we could look at. But for now, I'll walk you over the rest of my ideas and then we'll get back to the project. So this one right here... It was, yet again, thinking like over here, another way to tell you if something was on or off. So I thought, why don't you have like an item on display? So you have an item here, it's just hanging out on top of the hopper, and it tells you if something's on or off. And so then you'd have to control it all with like an item filter and an item elevator, and it became a headache really quickly. So that one, another idea that I haven't touched for a long time. Uh, then these over here, I'm not really sure what these are, they look similar to this. So yeah, I'm going to have another sip of my tea, read chat, and then we'll go over how this works again and maybe try and finish it. Which I'm not confident about. When I do redstone, I do, it does take me a while. <laughs> Hello Jimmy Jegs, welcome to the stream. Yes, there are lots of people hanging out here. They're probably watching the stream as well. Oh, I think November's heading out. Alright, thanks as always for doing what you do, November. Thanks to X, I now spend about three hours a day on War Thunder. Brilliant. That game's awesome. I really enjoyed playing that the other day. Uh, don't request don't request me to visit plots in chat. There's no point doing that. No point at all. I'm going to go make some tea now. Brilliant. Hmm. Do you mean 2D or 3D art for the nether wart? Aero amazing. Whatever way works for you, if you want to make it. I mean, I think, like, if you look at how what this is right here, it's basically 2D, but four times over, so it kind of looks 3D. I think 3D would look the best, but actually, the best way to answer this is, it probably doesn't matter if it's 2D or 3D, uh, just that it looks really good, right? Because <laughs> if it looks, if you can make it look really good in 3D, then that's great. And um, if you can make it look even better in 2D, then that's just awesome. But yeah, that's what it's all about. So how many hats do I have? I'm not sure. But I have. Let's see what banners we've got. Oh, does that not? Oh, it might be because the server's lagging that I can't use that, okay. Oh, hello cow, and see you later. <laughs> 3D causes a lot of lag. Um, no, I don't think... Well, we're talking about a 3D building here, so it'd be the same as a 2D one, it's just blocks. Although I've got a feeling we're talking about something different. What coordinates are you at? I'm at my plots. If you just type slash p h asuma, then you can come over here and hang out with these people. Check out what we're doing. <laughs> do you plan on playing Ark Evive Evolved Survival? If you so do, record it. I'm going to play that tomorrow in a live stream. Is the plan? Oh, they've got a desk and everything over here now. Very fancy. All right, so we've got 900 people watching. That's amazing. Um, when I was explaining this, we had about 500, so a lot of you are, are new, and I'll go over it again quickly, really quickly this time. 
So I built the mass animal breeder a while ago, a long while ago, probably like a year or two, and that sent all of the animals around in a circle while you sort of stood there breeding them, and uh, and then they'd automatically breed using the AFK trick. So then my idea was, well, let's try and compact that all the way down. So the way that we're going to do that is by standing in a spot. We have our dispenser here that's going to give us wheat, and we're going to look over at the cows, and they're going to be in a single spot right here. So they're going to bob up and down when we give it some water, which we can do, I think you hit it once to turn it off. No. Two. And then three. Oh, this is going to be difficult if it's going to be laggy. Okay, so it's on and then once for off. Is that right? There you go. So that thing operates it. But yeah, when the water's turned on, it means the cows bob up and down. Oh, and at the moment we haven't... No, no. Oh, maybe it can activate the once after you've turned it off. But anyway, the cows bob up and down, they get separated, they fall down here. And then when this thing is activated, there's a timer on this. And it's going to send... Um, yeah, sorry, it's going to activate this piston right here that's going to push a block across so the lava can dispense and uh, cook any of the, of the babies that have grown up into adults, the cows. And then you can get cooked food from it. So the idea is that it's an AFK breeder and you get cooked food in return, which I think is pretty cool. So, when I last left this thing, what I was looking at was this input here and thinking, I don't like the way you have to hit it like multiple times, but because we're using a lever to do that and it technically achieves what we want it to, it means this thing is a much more compact as opposed to using a button and then having to add some redstone to control this the way we want it to. So it means the only thing we have left to do is, uh, is power this thing somehow and also uh, hook it up to an input, which I would like to be this one right here, but I don't think that's going to be possible. Um, that being said, if we're using what is... Okay, it's not a... Let's look at this. We can... Right, so we just turned it on, and when we do that, we get a signal. So then we hit it again to turn it off. So it's on, but you've got to hit it one more time, because when that's unpowered, then the farm is actually active, because then this bit over here is going to work as well, like it is right now. Okay, so that means it's on, and then you hit it once to turn it off. Did I actually click on that, or are we... There we go, we're catching up. Okay, so whenever the signal comes through on here... Let me just double-check this, what I'm thinking. Yeah, I don't think we need to think about it too much. It's just a case of whenever this comes through here, it's going to change the state. So what we could possibly do is have some sort of piston down here. And it's only going to push the block over and back again. If this was a one tick, then we could use it as a T flip-flop. So I don't think that's quite going to work. What's that piston doing? Oh, is this where I've already tried to do something? Look, there's a piston pointing downwards with... Does that even get activated? No. Apparently my game sound is off. It's not. I can hear it making noises. Maybe it's just really quiet. Anyway, I'm going to be... Um... Oh, also, Lizzie, Lizzie Cool says the mods are amazing. That is fantastic <laughs> to hear. They are. They do a terrific job. Um... I can't see what the nether warp looks like. It doesn't grow, does it? It doesn't on the plot world. Good point. Um, so... Take a screenshot right now. <laughs> there you go. Or maybe use the Minecraft wiki. We've got a wall of people hanging out over here. It's awesome. Yeah, so... So, so, so. Um, this right here is sort of unused space. I think that piston also borders the water. So we have to do that quickly. So that is not necessary. Also, let's just remove some of this other bulk. So we can't really use this as a T-flip-flop. We probably can't create a second one of these. However, we do have access to this bit of redstone. Um, and that's going to... Is that block there necessary? Yes, it is, because of the water. Let's replace that with glass, though. Okay, cool. That's what I like to do. Is this block here necessary? It doesn't appear to be doing anything. Okay, so we could potentially transfer a signal across here in an on and off state. And really what we need is an override. So when it's when it's on, 
Right, it's now on, but you have to hit it again. So this is the on state, which means this bit of redstone down here will be turned off. And then when it's when it's now locked like it is, that's going to be on. So we could potentially use this bit of signal um, to do some something. <laughs> it's tricky stuff. It's really tricky stuff. But first of all, what we really need up here is the clock. I haven't got the clock sorted out. Actually, I think I can see the clock. This is the clock. I just never... Yeah, except we've got a torch on either side. That's odd. No, wait. We need to put a piece of redstone here as well, right? Oh, someone's placing blocks. That's the clock. Okay, so I can see where that was. Let's remove that for now. So if we can power that block there, then we're overriding it. So let's remove... Oh, actually, just this block here. So how would we get the signal from over here? We can power that block, but we can't put a repeater there because of the water. Um, we could... <laughs> can you see how limited our options are here? Space Cow 198 asks, what am I making? I'm sorry, you must have just tuned in and missed my explanation. We're building a cow farm. It's an automatic AFK cow... Hey, look, it's JB! Man of the hour, he's come to the rescue. This is the guy who knows uh, Redstone inside out. He's like Ease, he's just one of those people who um, is really great with Redstone. So, I don't know if JB's watching. Uh, I'll put it in chat. Hopefully he is. Also, if you are watching, I can't even hear you reply. <laughs> um, which is no good. So, so yeah, we're kind of getting this thing to do what we want it to. If we can take this signal and move it, so we can power that block. Uh, I'll tell you what we can do. We can go one block lower here. That's good to know because I don't want to go any lower than it already is, but if we've got the room. So what we could technically do is, uh, where's a repeater that I can sort of pinch? There we go. Is we could take a signal off in that direction, but then we've got this here. So how do we get it through there? Probably using a piston, right? Oh, what we could do is put a piston... Ah, okay. Let's transfer the signal like this. If we use a redstone block, we might... We're going to interrupt with stuff. So what we can do as an alternative is use a cauldron. Oh my god, I think we've done this, like, really quickly. <laughs> it's been so long since I played around with this thing, and I got really annoyed with it. Mainly because of this input, though. I still don't like how the lever works, but, you know, it's better than nothing, isn't it? Okay, so now we're in... We're not breeding, which is good. So, this being on means we're not breeding. It also means this is extended, which means, uh, with a comparator, we can uh, send the signal over in this direction. There we go. And I think all we need is two pieces of redstone, and it will override our clock. However will it because no it does yeah yeah pretty sure it does and that is I think oh or you can do that yep that's a good idea that saves you resources doesn't it okay let's change that to a repeater as well good stuff <laughs> there you go see JB knows his redstone um, so that is technically I think it done so let's what are we doing now we're we're activating breed mode. Okay, so now we're in on. It's once you've put the water on and then put this back here, you're in on mode. So, it doesn't look like it's worked. I think something is being bud powered. Yes. Ha! Redstone problems. This is bud powering. So, if we go one block lower here. Oh, and if we do that, it means we go even lower on our whole design. So, if we were to lower this by one, it wouldn't be bud powered by uh, this right here. But then we could just put something like where this block is to update it, if that makes sense. So let me give you a demonstration. So if this were powered, this piston right here would... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay, it's just because that turned off at the time that I placed it right there. Interesting. Right, so if we were to move this forward by one, that would no longer bud power it, I do believe. Let's find out if that's true or not, because that would be a, a really good solution. So we move it forward by one. Is this bud powering it? The answer is no. 
So now this block will be bar powering that one, and uh, we use we use the proper piston. Let me find it. I don't know if this is the cheapest way of providing an update, but that should now update this one when it's bud powered. Except, of course, this one is also bud powered by that one. Oh, no. <laughs> Why has it got to be like that? Um, oh, fascinating. Fascinating. Um, for people in chat, yeah, this, this, uh, this isn't the most interactive of streams. I see some of you, uh, talking about it. Like, if we're going to focus on doing this, then I'm not going to be able to chat too much, right? <laughs> Wall of people. Brilliant. So JB's up to something, I think. Interesting, so... We could possibly... Yeah, you could... See, we can go one block lower here. We could actually... If we can go one block lower... Is there something else that we could do here? Like... Ooh. If we have that there... See, we can't then take the signal upwards without going below it. That's the, that's the problem. I don't want to go any lower than that. Keep it nice and compact. There's got to be a way to do this. What are you trying to make us, Max Sahana? We are making a cow breeding farm automatic thing that's... Basically, it's the mass animal breeder, except it's going to auto-cook the animals into cooked food, and it's going to be super compact. <laughs> and it operates kind of funky as well. So, uh, this... Did I place this block here? Oh, does this already provide an update to that? I think it does. I think it already does. Yeah, look, JB's gone on replaced all of this. Oh, you don't have to use a repeater because it's on that side. That's good. Oh, I think he's just fixed it. So, it provides it with an update, right? Yeah, look, this piston's already doing that. So we hit it again and again. And now it's... Uh, oh, we've got it in the wrong mode. Let's see. Okay, so now it's in on. Except. Wait, is it? Are you supposed to. No, no, that's on. Okay, I think I've made a mistake here. Um, because I don't think you need that. I think you need a torch there. Right? No! Oh, it was doing the right thing. I'm being an idiot. Right, it's because it's slow, I couldn't hear the clicking over here as well. So that's going to dispense wheat, that's going to go through the hopper, that'll work just fine. So now it's dispensing wheat, uh, except... Oh, it's gone wrong again. Okay. Right, now we're in breeding mode. No... What? <laughs> I can't tell what's going on here because of the lag. Right, okay, there we go. So, we're in breeding mode. This is turned off, that's good. That means this clock is running, and it's powering this thing every so often. The dispenser is in the right place in the middle, and this thing over here is being powered. Technically, you know, bar some testing, it's, it's done, because we can stand here, and if we go and hit that one, two, three, then I do believe we've turned it off. So, this is powered. Our lava clock is no longer working, except it times down, so it is, it is off, it just might do it the once. And this has been overpowered as well, so this is now turned off. And then we hit it once more, what happened? What the... <laughs> the hell just happened? That is bizarre. Oh, let's just rebuild it. Okay, so what's going on now? Is it working? Is it not? Right, so it's in... It's in... When we hit it now, it should be... Oh, God, it's so laggy. We're going to we're gonna have to change this whole live streaming on the server thing because it's kind of impossible if you want to do redstone. Okay, so... 
I am a little bit clueless. I think we've got to hit it. No, because that's then going to turn it on. It's so tricky. Right, now it's in on mode. Water in the middle. That's not being overridden, so it's working. So is this. So you're standing in here in the middle, you're breeding. Then you go one, two, and three. That's on. And so is that. Huh. Okay, so if I hit it once more... Uh, I am... Okay, now we're breeding, so we hit it once, twice, and again. No, something's gone wrong here. I'm not sure what, but a moment ago I'm pretty sure that worked. Let's wait for it to catch up. Okay. What's gone wrong then? So that's on. That's definitely on. We've discussed that many times. So the water goes away and we override it. Oh, okay. So that's off. You hit it You hit it once to go off and three times to go on, maybe. So one, two, and three. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, right. So let's, let's check again. This is working. That isn't being overridden. Water in the middle. And then you hit it once. And you have overridden that, you have turned off the water in the middle, and you've overridden this. So then when you want to use it again, you go one, two, three. Not being overridden, water in the middle, not being overridden. Awesome! That's it, we did it, we actually finished. That's amazing. <laughs> we have done it, who wants to know what it is? Who Who's watching, like, they just turned up and they're like, what is he building? That technically works. I'm going to go test that. I can't believe it only took that long. I spent so many hours on this before, like a good six to eight hours, I reckon. You should move the contraption to a less laggy place or server. Well, there's not much we can do about that because wherever we move it, it's probably going to be equally laggy. What's going on over here? They've created like a little team on this side. <laughs> the better VIP table. <laughs> awesome. Oh. oh yeah, red for admin, yellow for VIPs. And now they're making a green one up the top here by the looks of it. That's so cool. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> and there's something over here. This was not made by me. Oh. Suma made the nether wart as 3D as it can be. In the sky, Foz. Aha, yes. See, this. The, I think he built this here a while ago, Fozzy. It looks alright. I think the brown doesn't make it feel quite like the nether wart. The nether wart is very red. I think I think this was done using um, like an image to block converter, and I think it needs to be done more like freehand. But that that alone doesn't look too bad. If it was more red, like the shape of it is okay. I think actually maybe a free a proper three D one would be best. I'm not sure, but it's all right. It's a start. I think there needs to be more red in there though. And down here I made a pallet, by the way. There are, there are reds in the game, but none of them are quite as vibrant as that. Unless you go for the redstone block. That should probably be on there, shouldn't it? There you go. <laughs> cool. Oh, it looks like the green are taking over the bottom here. Or something's going on. Anyway, we did it. Um, does anyone want to... <laughs> Know anything about it or ask any questions? I'm reading chat, I'm sipping my tea. We've got another thing we're going to do this stream, so that's not it, don't worry. If you want to get to the plot, you have to type slash p slash h and then assumer. I always thought it was a piece of toast with jam on it. <laughs> or like a burnt toast with jam on it. This right here. It, it could really well be. It could actually be a burnt piece of toast with jam on it. That is amazing. Alright, so... Uh, Doctor asks... What is it? Doctor with a K, that is. Okay, this is the Mass Animal Breeding Machine. This is the last time I'm going to explain this now because we've finished it, which is amazing. Um, is the plot going to be unlocked when the stream ends? Yes, it probably will. This is a Mass Animal Breeder. Animals are going to be in the middle here. You're going to get your wheat over here, so you can stand here continuously getting it, which means you can set your game up to hold down right-click while you're away from it, 
and then you're going to continuously breed the animals. So they're going to get separated down here. They're going to fall down into this little chamber when they get cooked up. Do you know what we don't have down here? A chest. We need a chest. Aha! So this is like the mass... The mass animal cow cooker super compact. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so you'll stand here breeding and... It'll cook them for you, basically, and you can do that while you're AFK, so you can get tons of food from it, which is really cool. But that's it, the contraption's finished. I don't think there's much more else to do here. That's it, you can... I hope you can reach that in survival, that's what I really need to know, like... I don't think you can, because we're in creative mode, we've got a bigger reach. So, that would be a big problem, actually. I'd probably just say, oh yeah, you've got to turn it on before you go inside. <laughs> I think that's a fair compromise. We might be able to shift this over by one, actually, looking at it. Oh no, this redstone here is going to be in the way of uh, that block at the bottom. So if we were to rotate the hopper into that space, it wouldn't. But if we put the hopper into this space right here, I think we need to redesign that a little bit so it's survival friendly. Okay, we've got more to do with this contraption then. It's a good thing I spotted that. Picardis says, first stream on Twitch. Awesome. Thanks for coming along and watching. There's always one, but today there is two. Okay, we will copy this. And we will paste it somewhere else. And we're probably going to have to wait. There we go. Alright, so let's say we've got to move this over by one. Um, let's get all the things we need for this on my hotbar. So, we don't need the block of redstone, we don't need the comparator, we need slabs. We need a hopper, not a chest. I don't need a sticky piston, we're going to need the droppers. Repeater will probably need redstone dust we've already got. Uh, a quartz block, and that's probably going to be it. Okay, so... Oh, there's a cauldron there. Why was that changed? Maybe JB changed that without me realising it. Why would we not do the cheap away? Hmm, maybe it caused an issue somewhere. Cowfall? <laughs> someone, someone suggested the name Cowfall in chat. No, we're not going to call it that. However, the cow technically falls down the end here. Look, it falls down a whole block. Cowfall. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Um, so what we're going to do is remove all of this unnecessary stuff. If we put the hopper facing that way, the carpet on top, then we can simply place this here and here. And then we need to change this ever so slightly. And that is going to be tricky. So we can have our blocks with our redstone right here. Actually we can't because that glass block needs to be there, doesn't it? Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> um, I think if we were to put the redstone like that, it would power the bottom block, but not the top one. But we could also get a bit like sloppy and put it there, which isn't great, but it would technically work, right? And that's probably more important than anything. Hmm. Or maybe we shift this around a little bit. Like that. Um, I can hear someone placing blocks. I think it's JB. I think uh, we don't want to think about this too much. Just make sure it works first of all. So, blocks either side of the carpet. Those half slabs are going to go there and there. And then our door. Oh, we can't put a door down because the piston's there. <laughs> oh, that's a problem. Well, maybe we can't. Maybe we can't squeeze it in there. Who knows? Yeah, I think I'm done with this for today. Oh. <laughs> Look at these guys all dressing up. Oh. I need an orange one for myself. Alright, we'll leave it at that. Let's, let's say that's that for today, because... I think it turned out pretty good. And Noah plays games YouTube asks uh, 
What are you building? Well, we've just finished building this thing. It's a... I've explained it so many times. It's an AFK cow breeder that cooks the cows and it's all done in a very small and compact space. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if you were able to compact this more because sometimes you can overcomplicate things. Like there's, There might be like a smarter way to make the lava work without having a clock to control it or something along those lines, you know? Like possibly you could just <laughs> run it off of this clock here, I don't know. Uh, but it'll be fun to see how that changes because I imagine we'll find ways to compact it. But there you go, it's basically like an old farm design sort of remade a little bit. <laughs> Use a trapdoor. Um, I think I know what you mean, but I don't think it will work. You need you need a door basically because the wheat can sort of hit into it. You need yeah, it's not gonna work with a trapdoor. So how does it feel to build with a load of spectators? I am very much used to it. I mean, like when I play Minecraft, there's technically lots of people watching anyway because of the videos. So, uh, it's not too much to get used to. There we go, teamwork. So I think they're going to give you a demonstration here, perhaps. Um, we could test it with cows, but if we do that here on the plot world, because the plot world isn't vanilla and there's other things going on that disable certain things, it's not going to be a fair test, so... A fence gate would not work because the hitbox of a fence gate means the wheat would land on top of the piston and not that right there. However, I mean there might be another way. You could have a piston sort of moving the block in and out but the door is the simplest way because you can just walk up to it and open it. So, yeah. Right. Um, I think we're done here. I'm going to have a bit more of my tea because it's getting cold. So, time to move on. Oh, I really like this song. I'm going to go to my other plot now. Look at me using commands. That's such a compass. Alright, so where can we build on this plot? There is actually not a lot of space here. <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll just get a new plot for this thing that I want to do. Although then the guys have got to put barriers everywhere. No, we won't do that. This right here I'll probably never finish. <laughs> In all reality. I wasn't happy with the size of it or anything. So, we'll go over here. Two is grass. Now if we go and shift our region upwards by one. And then expand it by about 12 and then we should get rid of everything that's above here. There you go, amazing world edit skills or whatever you want to call it. So what we're going to do now is build a mini game for Hermit Frills. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I got an orange one. Okay. Oh, that's amazing. Let's go on, go on, screenshot time. Where, where, where are my yellows? Where are my yellows and my reds at? Come on. Ah, oh, they, they're flying away. Alright, maybe we'll do that later. Um, so we're going to make a mini game. I need to clear my inventory of all this stuff. And this mini game is going to involve guardians, which means some of you might remember an episode we made a while back. You see XB and Zuljin, um they have that guardian delivery surface, and we can make... A mini game with it, and Autumn has uh, a tool. Don't you, Autumn? I've forgotten what it was already. So basically, there's a way to get guardians here on the plot world. And um, what we're going to do is give a little bit of thought. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to have to give a lot of thought to this. Okay, so we want to use. Oh, the sponge looks pretty good, actually. So we want to use um, the guardian as a weapon. Uh, let's just summon one in and see where this goes. So I think it's Spawn Mob Guardian. Hey, I remembered it. That is kind of incredible. So this guy's going to float in air. Right, we don't want him going too far. Uh, do we have sharpness here? 
Sharpness 5, Anvil. Don't you go anywhere, guy. There we go. Oh yeah, you can't hit it with a sword. Huh. <laughs> oh, it's so laggy. I'm not calling that farm cow fools, by the way. I'm reading chat here. <laughs> I know we call call on a fair few. Uh... Do you know what? I could call this this game right here could technically have fall in it because it involves parkour and falling. <laughs> uh, anyway, right here's the first test that I want to do. The guardians are one high. I mean, I'm pretty sure that they're going to be able to escape out of its one high gap, right? So we're going to have to sort of do them like that. Is it going to fit in there? No. Probably because I did it wrong. I'll tell you what, I'll kill that guy in a moment. Let's try again. There we go, we got one. You are a prisoner. Oh, I wonder if you can put them inside a block and then they'd shoot. Uh, also, we kind of need someone in game mode 1 here to help us test. Where's my redstone block? There we go. Okay, so if I remove those, that guy can shoot. He'd also be in a minecart now that I think about it. Which is kind of important because that's how XP will deliver them. Name tag them with a minecart. Alright, so can we get some... Uh, uh, are some of you guys in survival mode? Let's uh, put down a sign. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. Ah. Oh, it's Fenno. Hey, Fenno. Let's just build a little walking platform. Right, is this guy going to target anyone? Or is he just super peaceful and mellow? These are sort of walking platforms. <laughs> I don't think he's targeting anyone, is he? Oh, there we go. He's targeting Fenno. Okay, and then Fenno's going to get zapped eventually. It's going to be slow because of the lag. Yeah, this is actually... Possibly not going to work. Because we need to properly test this. We might need to do it on a vanilla server, just like a private one. Yeah, I think we are. Um, I wonder if Orton... I'll leave him a sign. Do we have a... Whitelisted? I'll leave that there. So... The lag's kind of stopping us from testing this, because as you can see, Fenno's just able to stand there without him hitting it. What I want to do in this game is make it so that these guys can target you, um, but you've got to do parkour to get from A to B. And so if you don't get it in time, like this is a timer, you're going to get zapped and then knocked off, which is uh, going to be cool. Um, so some of you are asking why it's so laggy. It's because we don't normally have this many people on. Look, we've got so many people here. All in the same area, it's it's putting a strain on the server, basically. Um, and, you know, it's to be expected. With building, it's fine because you're placing blocks. You're doing stuff like this, it's not quite the same. Oh, that's just a sign with nothing on it. Oh, yes we do. Amazing. Um, I will I will fire up Skype and you can send me the details and we'll, we'll use that. Also, if you're listening, Autumn, if we could whitelist um, our VIPs here as well. And of course the builders. And everyone who's hanging out. Okay. Let's have a look. Messages, messages. Alright, I haven't got one yet. But hopefully we'll get that soon. Will you try mini games then? Um, could do while we wait. Alright, we'll play a mini game while we wait. And then we'll come back to making this game. So, let's go to Point Runner. And Skype is open um, for anyone who wants to let me know. Let's go on the 8. I never play the 8 enough. So 
who we got over here, just me at the moment. So yeah, we'll go back to doing that in a moment, but we'll do it on a different server because the lag is really going to disrupt that one. Uh, Ovunk. Cow. Kaliskan. O Ovunk. Kaliskan. Man, I really want to remember how to say that. <laughs> um, you have missed us fixing a farm. We made a little farm. Here we go. People are joining. Um, that farm being a cow farm. Uh, we kind of yeah finished making that. I've been working on it for a long time. And then we started to make a game, but unfortunately the server is too laggy. So we're going to play around a point runner while we wait for uh, another one to play on. There's also some commands I can type in here too. I think it's slash game next. And then there we go. And now we're ready to play. I love this game. So much fun. Ding, 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 ding. Get the emeralds. Ah! And jump. Okay, actually, we want that lapis. Oh my god. <laughs> it's kind of nerve wracking. Okay, then. That is probably uh, all of the ones we're going to get. So now we look at redstone. Yeah, and you're basically just trying to get the highest points first. Oh, 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 oh. And we are running out of redstone fast. Okay. <laughs> this is kind of nuts. Oh, damn it. I messed that one up right there. Messed that jump up. And now it's spaces. This game will make you make funny noises, as you just heard. I wonder if... Okay, I got my message on Skype. That should be from Autumn. Okay, I've got the IP, and we're going to go there now. So, I'm going to turn off Microsoft for... Microsoft? <laughs> I'm going to turn off Minecraft for a second. Don't panic, people. Do not panic. We're just logging onto the server. And we're there. Sweet. Ah, we don't have a flat world, though. Um, and we're in creative. Oh, let's go up here. This will be nice and flat. There we go. This is our flat world now. <laughs> Just knock out some of this. Alright, that'll do. Um, so now I guess we're going to use like spawn eggs and stuff. So um, we're going to use the, the minecarts this time because that's how they're going to be delivered. We won't bother with naming them. I don't think that's going to make uh, a big difference. And then what did we have? Slabs and glass? Okay, so we'll also take that. Let's start off with some basic testing. Uh, if we go like this... Are you going to hop in there? No. Get out of it! <laughs> Let's go around like this. This song is like... That drum kick is the Minecraft drum kick, isn't it? You're not in the minecart. The minecart really has to move, doesn't it? We're not going to be able to pull this off any other way. Ah, oh, when you're out. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, how are we going to make this work? Maybe if it has a way out... Yeah, like that. It's got a way out, but the minecart's already there. So, we'll spawn in the Guardian. In you go, and we've picked it up. Awesome. Alright, and it's also in the right spot. We're going to drop it down onto the glass, and then put slabs around it. Actually, we don't even need slabs, because it's in the minecart. Oh my god, that's amazing. That means wherever it can shoot is going to be a lot easier to work with, right? Why did you use granite? Angry face. Rah! Because... I just clicked in a random place and it was granite. Alright, peeps, let's see. Um, <laughs> Walkers is running away. There we go. We need some survival um, subjects here. Let's uh, put up a little bit of a safety wall. One that you can climb up on. Alright, so... Oh, I don't know how to test this, really. I guess... Here's a thought. We're going to want maybe like a half slab above it as well. And maybe it'd be even on a half slab so no mobs can spawn in it. Or a glass block. Anyway, that's one of our targets right there. So now we build like a little parkour course around it. I think that's kind of all we need to do. So let's make this look nice. Let's think about it. Right, we're going to use iron bars. That's a good thing in parkour. 
put in some andesite and we need some ice, as always. Okay, um, so we'll start off with like an entrance. So it's like, come play the game. This is the way in. Put a glass wall along the outside so you can see the course. And then when you go inside, bear, bear in mind this is extremely rough. <laughs> we are in no way trying to create a masterpiece here. This is the testing. So it's going to be like, all right, go, go and play. Um, let's use just a couple of basic jumps to begin with. Let's jump up here, then you've got to go maybe like that, and then one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so you jump across to this one, and then a little block of ice, and. And then let's say this is the exit right here. So this is the first room. And then once you're over here, you're safe. Alright, how does that look? It looks terribly dull, I know. Alright, so let's get everyone back over here. Um, I need to... Need to communicate a little. Oh, my chat's turned off. I should probably turn that on. Okay, let's go to 75. <laughs> Alright, oh, Sherpa's going for it. Alright, go, go again, buddy. So, that thing doesn't necessarily... He's running away. <laughs> doesn't track onto you straight away. Oh, now he's after Fenno. Do you know what? Right, we need it. We need this guy to stay. I'm going to remove the half slab. I think the half slab's going to get in the way. Yeah, look. Now he's now he's following him up. Okay, so the half slab, no good. How far did Fenno get that time? Let's go one at a time. Go on, Fenno. Oh, it helped him. It helped him get to the end. Amazing. Uh, but we need to do this one at a time. Alright, so... Here we go. Right, it's been targeted pretty quickly. <laughs> that was no good. You gonna do it again? There we go. Let's see what happens. Alright, so it targeted him not quite as quick then, so you're always gonna have a little bit of time variation, I think. Oh! It got him very quick that time. And you're off. Do you know what? I should test this myself as well here. I've got some ideas already as to uh, how I can try and beat the system a little bit. Let's do some testing and see what happens. Alright, so I'm going to give this a go. So here's my first thought. We run in. We jump in. We're being targeted. Now I'm going to hold shift like this. Oh, no. Maybe we say you're not allowed to do that. Alright, let's go back up there. So, let's say you happen to be on the edge of the block. You're not holding... Ugh, did that wrong. Let's try again. Right, I'm on the edge of the block. I'm not hold. <laughs> I'm making a meal of this. Okay, let's get back over here. Right, I'm holding shift. Now I'm not. Right, so when this guy hits me, where am I going to land? I'm still landing on the block. Okay, so that is kind of a problem. <laughs> So there's your first issue. Uh, what was the other one I thought of? I can't remember. Can I hide behind this block and disrupt his beam? Uh, they're having a fist fight. <laughs> okay, right, he's standing over there. Let's let's see. You're gonna target me, right? Can I block? I think I just block the beam. That's interesting. Oh, I can't even jump. He's targeting me again. So I don't think that's going to make too much of a difference because you're going to be down, but it's something to consider in design, not to loop around on yourself. Right, let's see what happens with that whole holding shift thing when you're directly adjacent like this. Right, you get hit off. So it's when you're diagonal, so the diagonal length of the block is kind of cheaty. We're not going to win. There you go. 
But if I'm standing on this one, it's going to yeah, hit me back far enough. So when you go around a diagonal, that's when it's going to be an issue. Which is going to be unavoidable, I guess. Unless we're to do like just blocks that go across in like one line. And maybe you've got multiple guardians sort of guarding the way. This could be a really awesome game, I think. I really think we could do something special with this one. Also, oh, what if we made it so in order to do a jump, you had to get shot in midair? So you get to your first point, and then you've got to be like, okay, I'm timing it, I'm timing it, I'm going, bang, and then you land on the other bit. That could be amazing. <laughs> All right, use fence parkour. That's something I was going to mention. Different size blocks um, would definitely do it. So let's go and check that out. So we got like fences, fence gates, even. So we can try. Uh, we kind of want it on the diagonal, I think. So this can go in two ways. Um, fence post would probably work. I don't think we need to test that. Uh, iron bars again probably would work depending on its hitbox size. I'm not sure what other ones there are, to be honest. Um, Okay, let's go back to game mode zero and just wait a moment. Texture pack, we're using my modified vanilla one, so the glass looks slightly different. You can find a link to it on my channel, Banana, if you want to go there and check it out. Alright, here we go. Right, let's give it... Oh, pff, sorry. <laughs> let's give it another test. Okay, so we go up here and we stand on this one. Hold down shift. Uh, I think we can clearly see that's not going to work. It needs to be the other way around, I've just noticed think. Yeah, let's try it that way around. Doors. Yeah, we could use doors as well. That's another one. Hey. <laughs> I think he's in game mode one now. Okay, so we hop up here and then we stand on this, so this corner. Not holding shift and it knocks us off. Okay, I think that means that block's probably fair to use. Fellow is killed by Guardian using magic. That guardian is crafty black magic, eh? Can you do some hermit craft? Uh, we kind of are doing hermit craft. We're making a game for hermit craft. At the moment, we're just looking at the mechanics of this thing. So, so far, I've devised that when when on diagonals, you're not going to be able to use a full block. That looks like a, a no-go. Um, this thing can hit you sort of high and low, by the looks of it. What we could do is use multiple ones in an arena, and we can also use its beam to actually help you. Like, if you get hit in the right direction, then you'll be able to make a jump, possibly, if you time it correctly. So, that's uh, another one. And beyond that, I'm sure there's more ideas. So, if you've got any ideas for, uh, call it Laser Leaper. That's actually a very cool, <laughs> very cool name indeed. Um, so, if you've got any more ideas for what we could do with this game, then let me know in the chat. I'm reading it now. We're sort of, like, hanging out and... Seeing what's going on. <laughs> Jump towards him when he almost shoots. Okay, we'll try that one. Let's see what happens with that. Oh, I think I know what you're getting at there. I think I know what you're getting at. So he's about to shoot. Yeah, I see what you're getting at. Let me try that again. Okay, he's about to shoot, and then we jump. That was way too soon. Let's do that again. Alright, so we're halfway around this really difficult course, and then we jump. Oh, I did it wrong. It's when it goes green, but it goes green really quickly. Let's try again. Green. Oh, you got to call it just a little bit quicker. You Green. Ah, that is not good. Okay, so we may need some sort of jump prevention, uh, which is going to be really difficult in parkour. Maybe maybe we put down like an ode of Connor, like uh, Connor. <laughs> I just said an ode of Connor, a code of honor, where you you know if you're gonna play, don't cheat, don't don't jump into it and use its beam to help you. We could argue the same thing of corner blocks as well. So yeah, let's actually try and make this. Okay, here we go. Ugh, I'm sprinting to move fast. Get out of my way, Fenno. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> let's try again. 
Can anyone explain what this is? We're making a mini game in which you have to do parkour while the Guardian tries to shoot you. And we're going to do it in Survival Minecraft on Hermitcraft and I've given up. How can you make that jump over there? An ode to Connor. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's for the that's for the sumo dictionary right there, John Connor. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Use it as a strategy-based parkour game. I wouldn't call it strategy. Strategy usually involves like decision making. It's going to be reactionary. It's going to be how quickly can you do the parkour before this guy knocks you off. But it's going to be a really fun project. I, I'm thinking like multiple rooms, maybe multiple people involved in making them and stuff like that. It's going to be awesome. You should use heads to jump in on the parkour. That's a great idea, JLB. Yeah, because we've got heads on the server. We could use wither skulls. <laughs> this is not happening on Hermitcraft. We're in a we're in a server in an unknown part of the internet, and we're just checking out um, how this all works. Can you increase jump height by having Guardian directly below? Probably. You probably can. And we could possibly use that, like. Okay, so let's say, let's go into game mode 1, let's say we've got like a path on this side. Right, one, oh, let's go over by one. So here's our path, and then we go one, two, three, four, five. I think that's an impossible jump. And then you get hit by the Guardian, you just might make it, so let's try. It's going to be epic if we can do it. You going to aim at me, guy? Oh. <laughs> okay, here we go. Jump. Oh, it hit me back. We'll try again. Got to go a little bit sooner. Okay. Jump. I think I just nudged him. That's not good. We don't want to nudge this guy. Uh, now I need a way up there. That'll do. <laughs> Okay, aim at me. I'm here. What are you looking at? Hey! Oh, there we go, right. No, I can't. I don't think I'm ever going to get the timing for that one right. Can you recreate this on your server? I'd love to play. Um, Yeah, we might be able to leave some guardians on there. We're going to go back on the server in a moment and work on it. Right, let's try this again. Hey, over here. Okay. Now. Oh, the timing on that is near impossible. Let's try again. Oh, no. I don't think I'm going to get it done. How many more attempts will this take? That was about... Oh, the latest I've done so far. I need to wait just a little bit longer. Jump! Oh. Okay. Oh, <laughs> not quick enough. Now, I think I think that's extreme difficulty. That's the first time we've been above it. Oh. My suggestion move the guardians around using rails. That would be really cool. That's a great idea. I like that. Maybe we can use that for some uh, simpler ones. And we can have multiple guardians in there. This is going to be a lot of fun. What I think we need to do now is establish a theme. So we're going to go back onto the uh, onto the main server. And uh, let's see what we can build. There's walkers. <laughs> Food, yeah. We're only testing. We're not really worried about the food. Don't press tab. Oh yeah, I need to uh, turn off chat. There we go. And just check something else as well quickly. Alright. Um, where's my stream? Back to game. Awesome. Right, so we're going to come up with a build theme for this. 
Where's Fozzy when you need him? He's not on. <laughs> uh, I got some ideas anyway. I think, I think we'd be pretty smart to go with some Guardian themed blocks here, right? And in my mind, I'm kind of picturing uh, a lot of cyan wool, which we've got the farm for now, which is cool. Oh, well, they obviously go together good. But I was thinking, what if we had some like big sort of walls made out of this stuff? Try using trapdoors or stairs. Yeah, there's loads of blocks we could use. I don't think we need to focus on that much anymore that now though. We can just uh, start doing a little build work. Yeah, so what I'm thinking is that we have like um, some sort of like organic wool where... Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. I'm literally trying to think of the words to describe this and I can't. It's just in my head, so I'm going to try and build it. Some sort of big wall like this where everything's kind of organic and a bit flowing. This is where we need the builders, man. This isn't my, my thing right here. And then we'll have it come over the top again a little bit. And then come out here. <laughs> I really don't know what I'm doing. Try a combination of that and orange clay. That might work good, yeah. Let's go around like this. So if this were the wall of one side of the room... And then you got all your like jumpy bits in the middle. It's nicer than being plain. We need a lot more of this though, really. That's the thing. I've only built a little bit of it. If any of the um, builders here hanging out on the plot want to jump in here, just feel free to jump right in and add more to this. Just make it bigger and have blocks going all over the place. Yeah, and then we could like border it. So orange, we reckon orange is going to go in. Sponges are, remember this is survival, so sponges are going to be a little limit, limited. Uh, so our orange clay, yeah, it's a bit duller, isn't it? Oh, here's some other palette suggestions. That's interesting. So that's very bright. I think the dullness and the fact that it's a different texture is going to work quite well. You could sort of border this all with um, orange at the top. And then some sort of ceiling pattern, maybe. So the room, room's actually going to have a bit of a shape. Let's put that shape in. Uh, Asuma, when you were trying to jump over the Guardian, you only had three hunger bars. That's a really good thing. Uh, thanks for pointing that out. I guess, yeah, I wouldn't have been able to sprint across, would I? Which is what I was trying to do, so... Well noted. We may try and add that in, but it looks like it'd be extremely difficult either way. So let's say we're, we, you know, we're starting off with a basic room. It's just going to be a square. Then we can do all of this. I've also seen some really nice aquatic stuff being done recently with, um, with lots of stained glass and other blocks. I would love to show you guys, but I can't remember where to teleport. But that would go really well on the floor, I think. Alright, so let's have a look. I mean, we've also got to think in terms of survival as well. It's going to be, like, crazy to build. So this this whole thing being so very uh, clean is going to get pretty annoying, like, the way it is at the edge pretty quick. So we should probably have a few little bits like that. If that even makes sense. Just here and there to break it up so it's not a straight line. And then we'll go back like this and down over here. Okay, that kind of works. It's not terrible, that's for sure. And then one down there, right. 
See, that could be the room. That could be like uh, the site. Like the walls are all like this, and you've got to do the parkour bit. Although you could probably jump on the edge here and then use that to jump away, which isn't very good. Yeah, for those of you asking, we're building a mini game, and uh, we're doing the building part now, which is not my strength, that's for sure. Maybe I'll come up with something cleaner, something more my kind of style. I was hoping to do something organic, but... I mean, I've got to build this again in survival, so if we go too overboard with it, we might make way too much work for ourselves. So yeah, then somewhere in here you could have, like, the entrance. H. It is a H, indeed. And the entrance could be made out of these blocks. So let's say let's say the entrance is actually like around this kind of height. Okay. So that's your entrance, then you've got all of this around here. I'm just gonna bring it in quickly so we can kind of see how it would look. So it's gonna be in the middle of all this craziness going on. So some bits will be like that. And then just fill this in. Sorry, I go very quiet when I'm uh, <laughs> focusing on this building. Let's put them back here. There we go, that's looking pretty alright. Let's just dump a few more in there. Yeah, so you'd have all this crazy room with like cyan, orange at the top, and then this would be your entrance. And then you could have your, uh, your parkour sort of like this. Um, oh, no, 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 go back. And then in the middle of the room you'd have the guardian. Let's go and put that over here. So something like that, where is the middle? It's over by one. So your guardian would be resting on that block, you come out one side, got your little parkour, <laughs> which is kind of impossible. That's a good point actually, you kind of need like a little platform to walk off of there. Maybe we we'll just put that back by one. See, so yeah, you come in. That could be pretty cool. And then you'd have that in the middle of the room. And then down the bottom here, you'd have to do something different as well. I'm not sure what exactly. Yeah. So what other build styles could we go with? I want to use these materials. I think we'll probably rule this one out. Let's have a look at some of the other colour combinations. I like this over here. I think the ice would definitely have to go in there. Oh, there you go. There's there's some of like a little bit of what the floor could look like, and then underneath that you could put all sorts of other blocks like the nether warts and uh, little plants and things. I think this this is this would probably be like would look the nicest if you took it a bit further with detail on the walls. But in terms of building it in survival on Hermitcraft, I want to put a lot of rooms in this, so it's a lot of fun. And I think we want to go with something like relatively quick to do, so we can get the wall. We can get the clay, we can get all of these four right here, um, but they're kind of missing maybe just some quartz with it. Although quartz is kind of expensive, so again, let's think survival friendly. Maybe some andesite, so we've got some nice polished blocks. Yeah, that could work. Use slime blocks, someone is suggesting. For building, I don't think they'd work, but we could use them in the game for sure. Hmm. I'm really not sure. Alright, so let's start another room over here. Let's say... How can we make this work? I think, I think this right here is going to be really nice for the entrances like we've done already. So let's say we've got an entrance and then in between you have like a, a hallway between the two rooms. 
and then something can go on the walls. I'm not sure what. Or maybe these ones can actually sort of come in here. So as you go between the rooms, you can put a little bit of information in. And then you can have some lamps up here as well. Like, like that. So when you complete... I think maybe it looked really good if each room was like a different theme and then this was the recurring bit. So you sort of go through, you finished one, now you're going on to the next one. It tells you a little bit about it. You're also going to need like a way back. So when you fall down on the ground, you don't want to go all the way back to the beginning. You need an exit that takes you back up to that room and that room alone. So on the side here, you'd probably have like a, a little entrance as well and then a ladder from down below. Oh, let's go down like that. There are a lot of things to consider with this. <laughs> go up and over. It's actually a little back in, and then when you step through here, what you want to see is the theme. You want to get a sense of the room. Uh, let's start off with some dimensions here. Um, and let's place down a floor as well. So we're going to start sort of in the corner. Let's make that, and let's get our world edit axe. And what one is this? This is 1-6. Let's go expand by 10, if I could spell. Expand 10. And then let's set 1-6. So if that's our floor, that's a relatively small room, actually. I think we should expand by 2 and 2. And then let's say the exit's going to be all the way up here in the sky, like a lot higher up. Yeah, that looks that looks alright. Where's the middle going to be? Somewhere, is that the middle? I think that was the middle. Nicely guessed. So we'll have our uh, guardian on a sea lantern in the middle. Put him one lower. And then what kind of cool build style could we do around here? I feel like this thing should be offset, but we'll make it parallel with the wall. Uh, let's go down by one. How many blocks have we gone? Three? Let's go four. One, two, three. Actually no, let's go back. So we go three, one, two, three, down again. Like that. And then we'll mirror the pattern here. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about this actually. It's sort of working. And then what if we were to fill all of that back there? It's gotta be it's gotta be indented. Yeah, I think this could work. Something's wrong there. So it goes by two. Actually, no, it goes down by two. It just happens in the corner, so it looks a bit odd. Okay, something's definitely wrong right there. Or well, maybe it's not. One, two, three. I'm not, I'm not really sure what's going on in the corner. That's going to throw me off, but... We have something like that. Not quite what I was looking for. Ah, oh, I really I really feel like I'm just not in the building frame of mind to come up with like a pattern or a theme right now. It's kinda of frustrating. Or maybe I think it's just something I'd do better without talking. Cause I just wanna sort of get lost and like think and and build and just like flow with it, but if we had some sort of repeating pattern like this going around the room, it could look pretty cool, I think. Don't you think? I reckon it could look pretty cool. And then we could have sea lanterns around the edge like this. And that's going to go across and down. That's starting to look pretty cool, I think. Maybe we shouldn't have given up so soon. Let's try again over here. One, two, three. 
two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then we can put those sea lanterns in in freeze as well. Because then the next one starts there. One, two, three. Did I do that right? Yep, I did. Awesome. There we go, looks pretty cool. So that's going to look pretty awesome when it wraps around the entire room, right? I wish I knew a way to like stack all of this pattern really quickly. Is there a way to stack it? I don't think so. That's going to look awesome. This floor I might change as well, but then how would it meet with the ceiling? What would the ceiling be? We use the orange. We've already used orange. It's a dark prismarine. Oh, look at this. They're going ham on it. It looks awesome. Yeah, the vines go in there well. And the spruce looks really good next to um, that dark dark prismarine, doesn't it? Feel free to go ham, guys, if you're watching. Just like build stuff and we'll see what we can do. So let's go a little bit higher with this room, like to this kind of height. I feel like my, what might look cool on the ceiling is some glass and water. Is that in the corner? It is. Trust your instincts sometimes. Okay, so I see people are joining. Um, what server are you on? Like, the server is the title of the stream. Play.sumovoid.com And we are building a mini game for Hermitcraft. We have devised that the Guardians are awesome. Where is that Guardian? Yep, you can like have a Guardian and then build a little parkour course around it. Oh, he's getting him to shoot the squid. Huh. Oh, he didn't. Yeah, and so now we're going to build a game. And I think the way we're going to do this is by having loads of big rooms like this, one after the other, and having little parkour challenges in them. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. I love doing stuff like this on survival. That's what it's about. Uh, where does that one start and end? <laughs> I am not sure. Let's put in the cyan. One, two, three. Let's just go around with like this. One, two, three. Ah. One, two, three. One, two, like that. And yeah, in the corner there, it's just a little bit awkward. I think it's because these two blocks here are one and the same when you're counting and going around, so it's like one, two, three. And that's why this bit... Ah, that would still be two across, wouldn't it? Like... I'm not sure what's going on in that corner. One, two... Oh, this needs to come over by one more, right? No? <laughs> I'm really not sure what I've done there, but I think I've messed it up. Um, it's this bit, isn't it? Because they're one and the same. But they're not there. Oh, that's extremely confusing. The mystery of the corner! Will we ever know why it is so odd? Yeah, let's go like that. And then some more sea lanterns. And then just go back above. As we have more of this, you can see like how it all comes together a little bit better. Yeah, that, that corner is really screwed up somehow. I'm not sure how to fix it. So let's go and put those in. But yeah, picture that going around the entire room. You can't deny it, it would look really cool. It's just a simple pattern using some contrasting colours which kind of work together. One, two, three, one, two, three. So on the ceiling part where they meet up, we can have sea lanterns again. And that'll probably look cool from down here as well. Nice. You could also do one where the floor is lava. That would be really cool, though. <laughs> what minigame are you making? We're making one for Hermit Frills, where you have a guardian in the middle of a room, and you've got to jump a little parkour course around it. Oh, it's going to be so good. And yeah, I think this looks awesome. Let's uh, continue with the wall like this. I don't even know how that's going to work on the corner there. One, two, three. I think that's the way it would work. Um, so that would go one, two, three, one, two, three, 
like that. I hope I got that right. Either way, it looks pretty awesome. Uh, no, that's come out level. I've done that wrong. I need to go there. I think that's correct now. Yeah, that looks right. Alright, then we go down below. Use a beacon in the middle of the room, Asuma. We could do that. We could actually do that, but there's going to be lots of rooms and I picture them being all sort of all over the place. Anyway, I think this could be huge. It'd be a really awesome game on the server. Hello, we've got an army of people over here. Hello, everyone. I'm loving this drum and bass right now. <laughs> the old Amen loop. Kind of sounds like the Amen loop. Uh, what's going on here? That's what's going on. Once again, the corners feel really messed up. I need to start AFK farming some cyan wool. I think this is going to be the theme, like cyan wool and orange. <laughs> Just punching the ground, and uh, orange orange wool go together ever so well. That is so it. That is so. That could so be like a theme in one of the rooms. You go into it and you got that. Then you got a little parkour course. I like it. Um, so for the ceiling. Let's do something interesting. Let's go one block higher. Actually, no, we're going to go the same height. And then we're going to set some random glass colours. So they've gone with those ones. Let's have a look at what our options are. Yeah, they're pretty much... Let's go with these three right here. These are pretty much the, the bluest. So we need uh, 11, 3... And nine. Eleven three nine. So eleven. Ah, do you do a space or do you do a comma? Three and nine. We're about to find out. Uh, uh. <laughs> no, apparently you do commas. There we go. That looks really cool. So that kinda works, doesn't it? <laughs> And, oh, if we do this, I I think I know how to use this command now. So just so we go, slash, slash. Oh, I need to know the block. What are we going to use? We're going to use 3511. Walls, is it? Hey, look at that. Awesome. And now what we can do is set some water in here. So, 8 is water, right? Yep. Very cool. And then above that, some black wool. Now that looks really cool, doesn't it? I think I think the black wall might be a bit much. What's it like with white? It makes a big difference, doesn't it? Let's go with It's 13 blue. Let's go with oh no, it's green. Let's go with light blue, so free. Yeah, that looks good. So how's that for a ceiling? <laughs> you look up and see that. Ah, oh, this is so cool. All right, so uh, we've been doing this for a while now. Let's get some opinions in chat. What do you think of how this looks? Oh, that was me. <laughs> Let me know. But I think I'm going to work on this, you know, in my own time a little bit. And just sort of jam and... Oh, they're never going to match up, are they? I'll have to figure that out. But yeah, sort of figure it out for myself. I think it looks cool. Lots of people gawking, technically, yeah. I tell you what guys, make a human pyramid. We did it before. Let's get a nice base at the bottom and then make a pyramid going up. I'm watching. Do it over here. <laughs> we did it before. We can do it again. 
Chat has blamed XP crafted 282 times. That is a lot of times. So can we just get on the server and build stuff? Yes, but you have to register to get a plot and build on your own plot. Alright, let's see this human pyramid then. Hey look, they're starting. Huh. It's happening. The human pyramid is real. I'm going to step back and let these guys do their thing. <laughs> it's almost looking like a, a pyramid. It's becoming more of a tower now. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, I like this guy's skin. It's like, yeah, it's like that classic one, but just a little more clean, isn't it? Clean cut one. Awesome stuff, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, so I know it's been a short one today, but since I've kind of like figured out all I wanted to figure out, I feel like the rest of this I just need to do off camera in my own time. Uh, it looks like they're doing something awesome here, though. Why am I getting stuck on the vines? Uh. Yeah, so I'll figure all of this out, but I think we've got the bulk of it down. We know how the Guardians work, we know what we can do with them. We know how the rooms are going to be set up. This is going to be a massive build project on Hermitcraft, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to get started on it. <laughs> so I have something in mind. Give me a second, I'm just going to go check something. And... I don't want to keep you waiting. If you like the music, it is C418. If you Google that, you'll probably find him on Bandcamp. Um, yeah, I've got I got something we're gonna do. Let me just <laughs> bear with me, guys. I need to just get a message from someone. Okay, right. Let's go back. Yeah, crowd of awesome people here. I'm just waiting for a, for a message back from someone. Um, what can we do? What can we do? I have no idea. Let's teleport to someone. Who am I going to teleport to? Probably someone who's already over here. Yep. <laughs> Let's try again. Yep, yeah, everyone's just going to be over here, aren't they? Oh, it's so typical. Um. Oh, legitimate lags is over here. I saw him a moment ago. Hey, look, we found someone who's uh, who's not that. Ah, this looks interesting. Oh, there's actually like a whole bunch of buildings around here. This is cool. I like it. That's a nice style. I like the uh, I like the andesite here at the back. Actually, that works really well. And the interiors look great. Man, that looks awesome. <laughs> oh, I love what you can build with this stuff, man. I I am in awe of builders. I wish I could just build like this. I probably could if I put the time into it, but I don't have the as much freedom. That looks interesting. They've got like water going down around the outside. I don't know quite what that's supposed to represent. Oh, and then over on this side you've got like possibly cogs. Man, that is some crazy drum and bass music. Oh, I think I put the wrong record on. I did. Let's put on a different song. Alright, I'm still waiting back on a message from someone. <laughs> And uh, I'm not getting it at the moment. Just wait and see a little bit. This looks really great. Quartz looks so nice next to those prismarine colours. Oh, look at the shapes they've created here. And also the use of the sea lanterns to create a little cross. This is a lovely build style. This could really go somewhere. Is that a Reddit thing over there? Oh no, it's just a sore face. <laughs> and red and blue. Interesting colours to complement it there. Oh, okay, right, I've got my message. That's fantastic. Alright then. 
Um, where are we gonna? We're gonna hang out in this tree. So today we uh, fix that cow farm. Let's let's get up here. Oh, that's not my face. <laughs> so we fixed the cow farm. Yay for cow farms! And oh, hopefully I didn't break any blocks. Oh, we got some friends. That shrimps. <laughs> Shrimpus is here. Uh, yeah, so we fixed the cow farm. We figured out how the guardians work for a little mini game. We're going to build on Hermitcraft, and I started doing a little bit of building with that, um, but then, then I decided that I'd rather do that when I'm not streaming. So it's been a short one today. We're going to stream again tomorrow and on Friday, probably on Hermitcraft. Tomorrow, I'll be playing Ark. And right now, what we're going to do is we're going to go and raid Panda four nine nine four. This guy is awesome. He does the best survival stuff in Minecraft ever. So uh, that's who we're going to be raiding. It's time for an X raid. You know, guys know the deal. Go over there and say X raid like this, <laughs> and uh, and I'll host him, and you can see what he's up to. I'm going to go watch him because uh, he's playing in his survival world, which is. Uh, one of the craziest and coolest ever. And now, <laughs> that guy's standing in the way. Um, as always, thank you everyone ever so much for watching. It's been a lot of fun live streaming. And, uh, and that's going to be it. So, thank you very much for watching. And